Everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Vicki Waller. Got music, ready to go, Vicki. <laughs> no Motown. <laughs> That's right. So Vicki and I connected over email. We've been talking for a little bit. Totally amazing personality. And uh, we actually, and Vicki, just so you know, this was not the clincher, but it was kind of interesting. Uh, Vicki shared, we connected months ago and I just said, hey, I'm traveling right now. Can't do a podcast. <laughs> Excuse me. And she had mentioned that she actually tutors, um, and I'm allowed to say this, and I'm a little bit scared. I don't know if something will happen to my channel if I get in trouble for this. Courtney Kardashian's <laughs> kids, and Courtney Kardashian <clears throat> referenced your book, Yes, she, Yes, Your Child Can, Creating Success for Children with Learning Differences, called you a rock star. So I have to, so you're like a doctor <laughs> rock star, which is pretty amazing, but that, that's pretty cool. And so, <laughs> Uh, I actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I, you didn't even know I have this. So not only did Courtney Kardashian give you a shout out, but you got a special <laughs> air horn. There you go. That's even better, right? An air horn from George Cross. <laughs> there you go. Right, right. So hey, Vicky, thanks so much for taking the time. And and I asked you if it's okay to call you Vicky, and you prefer that. So I, I appreciate you being here too. And before I get into the three questions. Can you just tell uh, people just a little bit about your book? Yes, your child can creating success for children with learning differences. And you can actually see uh, the link down below. What happened? And I'm going to make it short. Nah, I can never make it short. <laughs> but every book that my parents that I, I teach kids and the parents come in and they've bought every book on ADHD. They've bought every book on learning disabilities, which, by the way, 40 years of doing this, I have never said learning disabilities mm -hmm. i call it learning differences because my children that i work with all have abilities and that's what i teach them with i don't think say they mm -hmm. have disabilities and they open these books and the books have a brain a picture of a brain so they have all the books mm -hmm. on their shelves and it do they don't understand them and all of a sudden i thought okay i have to do something a parent came to the door and I opened the door and she was crying. And I thought, oh my gosh, something happened to the family. And she said, they told me at school, my kid has to be tested by a brain doctor. What's wrong with this brain? And I said, the seven-year-old who knows every single thing about every animal that ever lived, there's nothing wrong with his brain. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've got to do something. I've got to have something that a parent can open up and follow. So I made a book that is a step-by-step -step book that will help parents, teachers, educators, doctors. Mm -hmm. So they know what to say to a kid before the child comes in to be tested. Everybody's scared to death and they don't know, have some Legos there, have something the child likes to draw, say, oh, draw, do you like to draw? And I wanted to say, have them see step by step what happens. How do you get a tutor? What does the testing mean? Mm -hmm. And it's all written in easy language that anybody can understand. And they, I also, the thing I noticed, it's funny, last night I was looking and I thought at the end of every chapter, I had a takeaway. Mm -hmm. And I also have a list of the questions in the chapter that maybe you have to ask the doctor or if you're getting a tutor. Oh, that's good. That's question to ask. So then you don't have to read the whole story. You can go to the end of the chapters and you can find out, you know, what's what's early intervention testing? What is a neuropsychologist? What does mm -hmm. that mean? Um, how do I hire the right person? What questions do I ask? I have a parent who said, are you Dr. Waller? And I said, yes. And she said, I've interviewed 26 people already for my son. So I want to interview you. And as it turned out, this child is now in ninth grade getting mm -hmm. all A's. She followed the path from my book, which wasn't a book yet. And she got him tested. Wow. She got help with me. She did found his passions. And it was funny. Passion was the Titanic, which is really funny. I mean, I, I've had a lot of kids with a lot of different passions, but it was the Titanic. And his second grade teacher said, we're having a book day. You can come dressed as a book character. And she looked at him, seven years old, and said, and don't come dressed as anything in the Titanic. The mother calls me. What should I do? I said, well, I know the teacher. If you tell the principal, principal's going to get the teacher in trouble. If you tell the, say something to the teacher, the teacher's going to take it out on your child. The day came. I call her up. I go, what happened? What did you do? She kept him home. 
because she didn't want to get him into trouble or get into trouble. She then had a Titanic birthday party. We all, the adults, came dressed in the Titanic, Aww. and it was the year that the movie came out. Right. I then found Robert Ballard, the discoverer of the Titanic, online, and he wrote him a letter. This boy wrote Robert Ballard, and he got back, and he wow. said, dream big, Josh, and don't let anyone talk you out of your dreams. And I, that boy still has that on his wall. And that was something he loved the Titanic. I used that passion to teach him to read. Yeah, and and I love and that. that, and I I love that focus because I think um, the you know looking at uh, differences as abilities, right? And having oh, yes, it, there's actually you reminded me of a I don't know if you've ever read it. There's a book. It's Malcolm Gladwell, and he talk. It's like I can't remember the exact okay, yeah. title, but it's David and Goliath, right? Right. And right. actually, there's a story about you know. Uh, in the Bible, David and Goliath and Goliath is this, you know, this huge favorite basically in this fight because he's so big, right? whatever. But the, ba the way they actually paint, I'm sure I'm like 99% sure this is a Malcolm Gladwell book. And it talked about actually David actually had like was seen as small and weak and things like this, but he actually was very fast. Yeah, you know, he had agility and there was like all these different skills that he actually had, but it was just like a shift of perception that actually, so it wasn't actually su such a surprise Win. And then he actually talked about, and from what I remember of this book, he talked about um, that a lot of like CEOs of companies actually have had uh, dyslexia. And the reason that they are um, become successful in that facet is because they're so focused on detail. Right. And it was like really interesting because it started to shift that. And I thought it was a really great book. And I, and I, and this, you know, obviously yours is tailored towards educators uh, and parents, you know, uh, helping not just, you know, giving strategies, but, you know, thinking differently about this. And so we're going to talk more about this book in a second, uh, but you have like a, a, a very, uh, you know, very well-rounded career. You've done a lot of different things in a lot of different places. So when you think about your career as an educator, uh, who is a teacher that really sticks out to you that inspired you and why? I never thought I was smart because I didn't think of smart as being creative. And I was always very creative. But my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Betts, we had to do a play. And anytime there was a play that had to be done, everybody called on Vicky. And Vicky always thought of the play, helped everybody write the play. And she said to me, you are so creative. She really gave me confidence mm -hmm. that I really didn't have. And I just remember her. And when I was sick at home, she would always send a postcard saying how we miss you in the classroom. And it's just stood out. She was just this very special person who always talked about what I was good at. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that just stuck with me for so long. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of times, you know, whether you're uh, a student, whether you're an adult, when you have people that can find your talents and gifts, it sometimes helps you find them yourself. Right. Like some, I, I like, Absolutely. I know we want kids to believe in themselves and that's really important, but sometimes they just have to feel the confidence of someone else, like someone that cares about them to see that too. Right. And like some of the best leaders, uh, I remember a, a leader that I had, her name is Kelly Wilkins. I've talked about her 10 million times on this podcast because she saw, she saw things in me. I had no idea were there. And once she started talking about them, then I started picking that up and started working on that too. Right. Cause I think we sometimes just think strengths our strengths and we should just leave them as is, but there's something that it can also be developed to become even stronger as you go. So I love that. So we're going to give like a, a big applause. And he said is Mrs. Betts. Is that correct? B E T Z. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. All right. So Vicki, you've had a lot of experience with different leaders, different administrators. Yeah. And I actually asked you this question before we talked about, it. you said you've had a ton. So I'm sure there's many stories you could pick from here, but when you think of a really inspiring administrator, inspiring leader, who's someone you think of and why? Well, I've read your book and I would have liked you to be my principal, but <laughs> other than you, there was Mrs. Aston and it was in Cincinnati. And she said, I want, it was after I got my master's degree in reading and she wanted me to be the reading teacher. And so she took a hallway that went from the hall to the outside and it was a little hallway and she put two doors on it and she made me this two by two room. And it had all the pipes going through it. So at about two o'clock in the afternoon, all the feces that went from the bathrooms went through <laughs> my pipes on top of me. But she, anything I wanted to do, 
She believed in me. She said, do it. She, I had a little girl who had rickets. I've just looked her up and I can't find her. She had rickets. And I found a doctor at University of Cincinnati downtown. And he said, bring this child to me. And I brought the child had come from Appalachia with her parents. I brought them over. I said to the mother, she said, okay. She was a little, she was scared about it. We went to the doctor and the doctor said, the mother had rickets. I can fix her legs. Mm. I drove home that day and I said, I have done the best thing in the world. I mean, these are very poor people and they had were so sick and we could fix this child. And I really thought this is what teaching is all about. Mm. And we got back and I didn't hear from the mother, which I thought was a little, little weird. And the principal said to me, well, you know, let's wait and see what happens. Two weeks later, the house was abandoned. They never paid their rent. We never heard from them again. Mm. It was... It was devastating. And the principal always backed me. Anything that I wanted to do in this silly little room. I had a computer in my room in 1975. 1975, Borg Warner gave me a computer, this oh. thing called a computer. And, and I used it in this little tiny room. But I didn't like it because the kids wanted to be on it all the time. 1975. Right. They wanted to be on it all the time. And I didn't like that. Well, that, that was the year I was born, right? So from the computers that I know, that was, uh, it was like one of those was computers that took up the whole room, one of those. I don't know. What's no, 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 it was a desk computer, Borg okay. Warner, but it was built, isn't it? But it, I just I had no idea. that it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't my thing, but I think it's so funny. I had it since 1975 <laughs> and I can never even find something on my computer now. I'm always asking my <laughs> Well, you're, do, you're doing amazing too, right? So I didn't know that. I didn't know. I got to look that up. What is it called? A, a, a B O R G Borg Warner W A R N E R. They were a big computer. They were a computer something firm. And I had <laughs> yeah. the big. I had the. I'm big. looking it up. I should have bought yeah. some Borg Warner stock when I was younger, right? No, okay, that's what. No Borg <laughs> Warner stock. I should have kept the machine for gonna say. 1975. <laughs> and my students think it's so funny. Even if they can't read, they can maneuver everything on the computer. They go, oh, Doctor Wall, move away, and I'll do it. And I think it's so funny that I still can't do it. I said, listen, I had a computer in 1975. That's what I tell them. Well, they go, what? It's funny. I saw a <laughs> meme, right, of, a, of a, a kid making fun of their parents because they couldn't use the computer. The parents said, I taught you how to use a spoon. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> oh, that's I wouldn't be talking, one. right? So, it's kind of funny. All right. Oh, that is very fun. Last question. Um, so in all your years of teaching, you know, of different experiences, you've worked with so many people. If you go back to your first year of education, what advice would you give to yourself? Keep doing it. I had 40 children in the inner city of Detroit. Hmm. They said to me when I got to the school, there we don't have anything to give you. It's the worst school, it's the worst class in the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. I walk in. And we had the old desks. This is 1967 or eight. And uh, old desk, there's not one book, not one book, no pencils, no markers. It was the first time I started begging and I'm still begging. I beg everybody. <laughs> I'll ask anybody to do to, if, to help my students. I ask anybody. I went to every store. I got markers. I got pencils. I got everything. Well, they were supposed to be doing, I think it was fourth grade. So I said, listen, we have, let's do the United States. They don't even know what the United States was. And I said, find me relatives that live in different parts. And I brought in all this stuff. We made, we actually made the whole United States all over the room. We wrote letters. Mm -hmm. We did not email. <laughs> we wrote real letters. I got them stamps. They wrote to their relatives and they wrote back. They loved what they were doing. And then I taught them to read using Motown music. Oh, That's wow. how I taught them to read. I, I had to type with a typewriter all the, the, the entire, all the words to the songs. And I sent, I, in between doing the United States and getting the letters, we learned to read by using Motown songs. And I, I passed out all the lyrics and we found the blends and digraphs and whatever. And right. we sang a lot. It was the best year ever. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I, I think your advice of like, you know, just kind of focusing on just keep going through it. Uh, you know, obviously, if it's you, yeah, you learn pretty quick if it's not for you, right? And I think there, there's, there's no shame in actually walking away from a profession that you, 
don't necessarily want to do I, because I we do that in your field too. But you know, yeah. I, I think there's there's nothing better than you know finding that uh, thing that you're passionate about and living that out. So it, you can tell that you're passionate about what you do, and uh, oh, I, I love and, like, it. You can feel that enthusiasm. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. And everyone, if you're listening, check out Yes, Your Child Can, Creating Success for Children uh, with Learning Differences. It is down in the description below. Vicki, thank you so much for being on. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you so much for inviting me.